Good afternoon, Year 7. Good afternoon, Miss. Hopefully you've all had a good day today. Um, welcome to lesson number two of um, Depth Study 3. And we're, we're looking at um, the Asian world and our depth study is China. So you probably remember from our last class that we started speaking a little bit about China and what some of the features were. Um, you know, anyone remember something about China that we raised last week? Kamisha? Um, the Great Wall of China. Good. Yes, that was one of the things we spoke about. Jacinta? I remember two types of languages. Two languages. Good. And what were they? Mandarin and Cantonese. Oh, well done. Great. Very good. Anyone else remember anything that we covered about China last week? Last lesson? Kamisha? They're very good at skiing and swimming and gymnastics. Okay. Good. All right. So we've got a lot about people at the moment and I guess that's an interesting point to start today because that's what we're going to be covering in a bit more detail. Last lesson we spoke about some of the more general things about China, where it was located in Asia, looked at some of the population, people, developments and what we're starting to focus on from today's lesson onwards is more looking at ancient China. So we can see where... Um, you know, life in China started previously to where it is now. And that's what history is all about. You know, you've probably learnt in your other classes prior to now as well that we learn all about the things in the past and what happened and why and how and that helps us learn and focus on where we're at now. And maybe the reason why the world or society is a bit, a bit like it is now. Okay. So I might just hand the worksheets out for the time being. We'll go through and everyone can have a bit of a read today. Um, and then we've got a couple of fun activities to do as a part of, of those worksheets. So hopefully you'll all enjoy. And please, if you do have any questions as we go along, make sure that you're raising those questions. But we'll have a bit of a chat about the passage as we go. So if you'd like to just pass, take one and pass one along, that would be great. So what we'll do as a class, we'll go around the room and everyone can have a turn at reading the passages. Yes, just a moment. That's fine. Pop your hand down. Sure. Just a moment. That's all right. Did you need something to send up? I got a question about one word that I don't know what it means. Oh, that's okay. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay? We'll all read it together. No, we're not all reading it together. Oh. Okay. So, Tian, would you like to start first, actually? If you could just read the first paragraph for me, please. That would be great. Like all societies of the past, traditional China had a very distinct class system. There was a very wealthy upper class as well as a poor peasant class and each lived their own separate way. Okay, so that's a fairly interesting sort of first, um, first sentence, first paragraph there. So we're getting a really good introduction there. We've got a few, a few unusual words that you may not have even heard before. Like all societies. Anyone know what a society is? Kamisha? I think it's like how we live in different kinds of places. Good. Yeah, well done. That's, that's a good effort. Very good. So traditional China, we're talking about many, many years ago now, had a very distinct class system. Have any of you heard of the word class before? before? Like the different groups. Yes, yeah, that's, that's more like it, that's right. So it's more about the, different, the differences within people and the way people are raised. So just like in our lives today, everybody comes from different backgrounds, different places and so on. In ancient times, there were a breakdown of class. So there were the very wealthy, as it said, and there were the very poor. So the word peasant... Do you think that would be the very wealthy or do you think that would be the very poor? Poor. Good. Okay. All right. Let's, let's go on. Alinta, could you read the next paragraph for me, please? 
You got a lot of information in that sentence as well. We'll read through the passage like we are now as a class, and then at the end you'll have time to go through and look at it in a little bit more detail again. But I'd like to just point out a couple of words there as well. So we're talking about the fact that the rich and the poor, and obviously the rich were treated very, very differently to how the poor were treated. Just from your own experiences <coughs> now, what and, and the description, I guess, of the colours and the clothes, what would you expect someone who was quite well off to maybe look like versus someone who was quite poor? Misha? Um, well, the poor people would wear um, like like rags, like made into like clothes, and then the um the people that uh, got like good the good people that have money and have black clothes, mm -hmm. they would wear like silk and like all different colours. That's right. That's right. So we also expect, like in today's society and how we live here. If people are very well off, they have very big homes, very luxurious cars, they might have very good jobs that pay a lot of money. The same as what the rich class or the wealthy class in ancient China would have had. Jewels, gold, you know, lots of belongings, expensive things, okay? And very, very different to the poor. So if you imagine poor people that we see Often their clothes are older, dirtier, rags, like you say. You know, so we've got a different look of people altogether. Some of them may live in very poor housing. You know, very basic accommodation, not in really nice homes. Okay. Jacinta, would you like to read that next paragraph here, please? Members of the royal family and high-ranking official danger. Dangled jade, gold or silver bracelets from their arms. They ate more of better tasting food and had more leisure time. China's richest man was the emperor. 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 Tian, could you could you sort of explain what you think that paragraph might be getting at? Do you think? <laughs> Members of the royal family and high-ranking officials dangle jade, gold or silver bracelets from their arms, meaning they were very well decorated with jewellery. They ate more and better tasting food and had more leisure time, more free time. They didn't have to work as hard. Okay? Yes? Um, well, the poor people had to stay outside and work all day to like make some stuff to sell and they had to like get money of people of the rich people to sell their stuff so they can get some some money so they can buy some stuff. Good. Very good. Very very good. Okay, Joe, could you read the next one please? The peasant poor. The poor worked very hard. Few could read or write. Most were farmers living on small plots of land. Some owned their land, but other worked for rich landowners, giving them part of each harvest. Poor families sometimes sold their daughters to being servants of the rich. Even in good times, farmer kept little or their crops. Their work helped feed everyone else in society. When crops failed because of drought or floods, farmers risked losing their land. Question there. Thanks. So if you need to look back at your passage, to help you with your information, make sure you do. Just let me finish, please, Kamisha, okay? Just let me finish, please. So if you need to revert back to the passage to help you write the information down on your activity sheet, please do that. And if you have any questions, please raise your hand. How much the pictures can actually tell us. So have a good look at the picture first. Maybe you need to have a, a look at the picture first, Jacinta. Don't worry about the material. Have a good look here at the material first. Pictures. Say again. That's right. So do that. Yes, just having trouble or need any help. 
or is it fairly clear between the two pictures? Fairly clear, clear. Clear, okay, well done. Is it okay, Tian? Yeah. Yes. Very nice, neat writing, Kamisha. Just it has to. Thank you, Year 7.